The following is presented by CrewRoundTable.com Podcast Network. Join JR as he talks to friends, family, co-workers, man on the street, and perfect strangers to bring you their stories. This is JR Talks to People. Hello, everyone, and welcome to JR Talks to People. Today we have a great guest star. Um, he is a musician, a songwriter, and an all around good guy. This is uh, Mike Bryant. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? So, Mike, uh, you're, you're in a couple of bands. Uh, can you want to talk about them a little bit? Sure. Uh, I'm in an industrial metal band called Nano Christ, and I'm in a nerd rock band called Crake and Not Stirred. Really? Interesting. Um, this before we get to Kraken, which is the the point, the reason why we're we're here today. That you know, about uh, talking about uh, Nano Christ a little bit. Sure. What do you want to know oh, about right. Nano Christ? Um, how long have you been? How long have you guys been together? What brought what brought you guys together? I, I'm very, always curious as to what forms uh, what nucleates a band. Nano Christ have been together for 19 years. Uh, well, it was 19 years ago uh, next month, I think, that the first album came out. Uh, originally, it was just me, uh, Squirm, our singer, and uh, bass player uh, Scott Fitches. Scott is no longer in the band, but uh, we uh, we put out three, four albums, actually, uh, just as a studio band. And it was the release party for our fourth album that we became a live band. We got ourselves a, a keyboard player for that, and then eventually added a drummer. We've been through a number of different uh, lineups, but uh, Squirm and I have been uh, sort of the, the core of the whole thing since day one. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, and the and uh, Craig and Esther. That's a, that's a solo act, right? That is a solo act. It's me. I write songs about Star Wars, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Lord of the Rings, that sort of thing, and uh, I perform them with a, a guitar and a laptop and a projection screen that shows videos and lyrics and things like that. Yeah, I've seen. I've been to a couple of your shows. They're really, really uh, creative. I think you did one where you were singing a duet with a pre-recorded. Uh, uh, video. That's right, with uh, Mary Amber. She's a, uh, a geek pop musician from Australia. Uh, we met on Twitter and decided we should do a song together. And so we did a song called uh, Brain in a Tank, which is about two uh, brains and tanks bent on world domination. And they, they kind of have an argument with each other in song. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So how many... So um, what inspired you to... to, to, to Go out on your own, do it, do it, make it into a solo act. Um. Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, being in a band, sometimes you know you you have to deal with other people's schedules, other people's everything, and uh, I feel that a lot of the time I'm not getting the amount of work done that I want. I have so many, so much music I write, so many things I want to do, and um, I had this idea for a, a nerd music kind of thing, and I thought, you know, I can do that just me. Um, when I started doing this kind of thing in the early 90s, someone with a, a guitar and backing tracks would not have gotten very many shows, but now people seem to care less. I think just the fact that there's so many pop bands now that people probably aren't even singing at all, that the fact that at least one person is singing and playing an instrument doesn't matter that you've got a laptop running the rest of the show. Okay, that's pretty. That's true, it's true now. Uh, yeah, I would imagine with the more indie, more indie acts, that's, uh, there's a lot more forgiveness on trying to make up the... The rest of the the production value. Yeah, exactly. It would be pretty cool to have a full band to do Kraken, and at some point I would like to do that, but I think that point is, is probably a while off. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, now you have a Kickstarter going for a pretty creative project. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's a green vinyl record. Uh, it's going to be uh, six songs. It's called Robots vs. Monsters. So the first three songs, side one, is going to be a bunch of electronica songs about robots, and okay. side two is a bunch of uh, metal songs uh, about monsters. And there's a bit of a plot going on, and the monsters and the robots invade each other's sides, and there are rap battles, and they say horrible things about each other's moms, and uh, it's done, it's recorded, I just need the money to put it on to vinyl. And, uh, and as I said, green vinyl, because everyone needs green vinyl. 
Who doesn't? I exactly. can't think of reason. Exactly. Now, there are CD and download options as well. If you don't have a record player, you just don't want a thing, you can always get the download as well. But uh, there's a number of different uh, pledge levels. Uh, in fact, if you want to pay for the entire thing, you get the guitar that I use to record it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Very, very cool. I guess that complements the the green C, the, the green cassette you uh, issued previously. Yeah, mixtape. It was called the first song on it is called mixtape. It's about staying up at night in the '80s to make a mixtape for a person you like and then not giving it to them. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, yeah, it was sparkly and green. Very cool. Very cool. All right, so you actually uh, you actually brought uh, a single with you the the, the aforementioned. Mixtape. I did. Uh, do you want to? Uh, I guess you already introduced it for us. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll play it right now. Awesome. And we'll be right back after the song. Bye. 
All right, that's cool, and uh, I thought that was a, it's a it's a really good uh, really good piece there. I loved it. Well, thanks. I'm proud of that one. Yeah, you should be. Um, so, how, how you, tell me more about the, the whole vinyl idea. Uh, the process. What's the process of getting something made into vinyl? Because that's it's it's come, it's, a, it's making a comeback. I can I know that it, it is making a comeback, and there was a place in Montreal which was uh, I think the only place in Canada doing it for a long time, and they closed. But there's like two or three more have opened or are opening. So obviously someone's doing okay making vinyl. Uh, I'm planning on getting this done through... Uh, I don't remember the name of the place that actually does the vinyl, but it's brokered through the Lacquer Channel, which is uh, their mastering facility. Um, mastering is basically when you take a recorded and mixed album and basically polish it, turn it into a real record. And Lacquer Channel have done Kiss, they did U2's Joshua Tree, they did Rush's 2112, they've done Peter Gabriel, and all kinds of people dating way back to the 70s. I think this year is their 40th anniversary, in fact. So, as far as the mastering goes, it's in good hands, and no one knows better how to master it specifically for vinyl, because vinyl is different than other mediums. If okay. you something mastered for... Uh, for CD or for iTunes or something, there's little different tweaks that you would do than you would for vinyl. So they're going to do uh, the mastering for the vinyl and for other, and uh, then they're getting the the vinyl done for me. Like I said, they broker it through a, uh, another, like through a place that does the vinyl. Very cool. Now this is like the full size. Uh, yeah, vinyl is not going to be like the Peter Pan turn the page here size. No, no, it's going to be a full size like twelve inch vinyl, like a real record. Wow. Yeah, that that is, that is awesome. I think so. So what's so after so after that what's next? Do you have a future plans for Kraken? Well, next weekend, the sixteenth to eighteenth, I'm going to be at YetiCon. Um, I go to a lot of uh, nerd conventions and promote my music there because that seems the place to promote nerd music. That sounds appropriate. Yeah, and I'm playing YetiCon is in Collingwood at uh, Blue Mountain Resort, and I'm going to be playing in the Huron Ballroom there on the seventeenth at six p.m. I'm doing a performance right before the burlesque, so hopefully people will come by to you know get a good seat for the burlesque, and then they'll have to watch me. So that'll, <laughs> that's, that'll that's good. That's good. Hey, location, location, location. Exactly. And uh, after that, you know, I put out. Um, I try to do a song a month, and um, so I'll just keep doing that, and uh, at some point, play some more shows. Very cool. So if anyone wanted to reach you and see and learn and you know learn more about yourself. Uh, how would they get a reach? How would they get a hold of you? Well, they would go to krakennotstirred dot com. That's K R A K E N, like the sea monster, only spelled f- or pronounced funny. So krakennotstirred dot com, and uh, anything you would need to know is there. You can there's my email address, and there's my Twitter and Facebook and SoundCloud and all uh, all that good stuff is all uh, available there. Very cool. Well, thanks, uh, thanks for stopping by on the show. I really appreciate it. No, and, thanks uh, for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for listening to this episode of JR Talks to People. Our opening and closing music was provided by bensound.com. Subscribe to the Crew Roundtable podcast here on iTunes, Google Play, or visit crewroundtable.com to listen online. Remember, subscribing not only gets you access to this podcast, but also Hot Takes with Gino and the parent podcast, Crew Roundtable. If you enjoyed this podcast or any others on the Crew Roundtable network, please take time to rate and review us on iTunes. Once again, thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you again next time.